We want to say praise the Lord to everyone, and certainly we're grateful to the Lord for being here on this, what is this, third or fourth Sunday? Third? Fourth Sunday. Amen. We give honor to God our Father who has created all things by the power of his eternal and blessed word. And not only that, who has blessed us with the salvation that we have through the redemptive power and blood of the Lamb of God. Give honor to the absence of your pastor, Anthony Harris. We are certainly uh, grateful for the opportunity just to be here to worship the Lord with you. Amen. We have come a long ways as a people. Yes, Amen. Amen. That we have come out of our ignorance and our stupidity yes, yes. and our heathenistic ways. And God has brought us into the light of the truth of the gospel that he could save us and deliver us from the powers of the enemy. And for this cause we come to worship and we come to praise him and to give him the glory because we realize had not the Lord been on our side, we wouldn't have made it unto this present day and time. But I feel like a shout is in the building this morning. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And the joy of the Lord is your strength. We come to rejoice. Amen. Lord has been so good. And not only has he been good, but at this present time, he is good. We don't want to delay the service any longer. But amen. We want to look to God. And we, we're so, so grateful to see these young folks come forth and the young man that read the scripture it took my mind back to my own children amen as we brought them up in the church amen everywhere that sister blue and i went we carried our family our children was right there and to this day Amen. The girls are down there in Delaware and Virginia and uh, amen, serving and worshiping God and amen. And uh, I get a call every now and then from my youngest son and the anointing is on him and he's crying and praising God and amen. And I told him a few times, I said, now, you know, we having a we having church on the phone and sometimes he, he we would go on for almost an hour and a half. He, he would get, he would really, and I just let him have it because the Lord be just blessing him. And I dare not try to stop him, but one day I th told him, I said, you know, my phone only has about seven or eight hundred minutes on it. <laughs> but uh, I'm grateful. Amen. That we brought him with us. Amen. Come Sunday, we didn't give him to the babysitter. We put them in the car and come through the week at prayer service and Bible class. We put them in the car with us. Amen. 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 I'm grateful because they have all turned to say to me, thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. It's a wonderful thing when your children can turn and look over their lives and see what God has done because of you and say thank you. Amen. God bless you. We honor the pulpit this evening, this, uh, this evening, uh, and certainly for uh, the welcome, the hospitality that we have received so wonderfully, and I am grateful because there are some places you can go, and I've been there, believe me, when I tell you this, uh, you don't feel the welcome. Amen. The standoff attitude, and, and you know, and people say, "Say you can't just say you're saved." That's with the mouth. That's right. You got to manifest this thing. Amen. Amen. And hospitality is an expression of love. Amen. That you care about the person that is coming, so you make it conducive for him to feel welcome or she. Amen. But we're grateful to the Lord to be here, and. Uh, we want to do what the Lord said do. And let us continue, as I hear a minister said, to pray for your pastor. Leadership needs prayer, amen, every day. Amen. amen. Jesus said to the disciples, they, he quoted a passage of scripture, and he said, they will smack the shepherd, and the sheep will flee. 
It makes you to know that if the enemy can get to the head, amen, it will hurt the body. And so pray for your pastor. God bless you and heaven smile upon you. For this that we will bring to you under the leading of the Lord, amen, we ask for your undivided attention, please, amen, because I have never been a popcorn preacher. Now, there are some, and uh, granted, they do well. That is just not my style. And so the Lord deals with me where I am, and I'm grateful for that. Amen. Shall we look to the Lord for a moment of prayer? Eternal and everlasting God, once again, we, your children, have gathered ourselves together into this place that has been sanctified and set aside for worship. We come, Jesus Christ, that we would be edified, amen, and that we can be comforted by you. We need you this morning because there are the opposition and there are problems of life that we have found that humanly and physically or psychologically in any way pertaining to our human status that we're not able to deal with on our own. But we come to do as the Apostle Paul has bid us to do, and that is to cast all our cares upon you, for we believe that you care about us. So come by, I pray, dear God, and open the windows of heaven Open the eyes of our understanding and let a word, a word that will heal us, a word that will deliver us, a word that will save us, that we would be to your glory and to your honor. We bind every demon power. We plead the blood of the Lamb of God. We look to you who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. We give you praise. We give you glory in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 We would like to call your attention to the book of St. John and the first chapter. The book of St. John and the first chapter. And we will begin reading at verse 15 through 34. And I ask for your undivided attention once again. And if you will bear with me, amen, we will certainly, under the unction of the Holy Ghost, make this message as plain as we can, amen. as God has given it unto me. Amen. Beginning at verse 15, you'll find these words. John bear witness of him and cried saying this was he of whom I spoke he that cometh after me is preferred before me for he was before me and of his fullness have all we received and grace for grace for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man had seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he had declared him. And this is the record of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then art thou, Elijah? And he said, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou, that we may Give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? He saith, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As said the prophet Isaiah or Isaiah. And they which were sent 
were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said unto him, Why baptize thou then if thou be not that Christ, nor Elijah, neither that prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water. But there standeth one among you whom ye knew not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoelace I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Barbaris, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the son's sins of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me, and I knew him not, but that he, should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bore record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him. The same is he which baptized with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Amen. I know we did some extensive reading, but... For the thought that God has given us, we would like to relate this unto you and give you a picture, amen, in your minds of what really was going on that was so significant unto us today. Amen. I would like to call your attention to the fact of this passage of scripture, amen, as it begins. Notice the first words in uh, verse 15. John bore witness of him. Now, this was John's choice. This was what God had called him to do. You won't find John walking with the 12 disciples. You will not find him, amen, traveling in the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. For John's mission was to declare as a witness that this is the Messiah. You know, and I know through the studying of the word of God, that Israel as a nation at this particular time, amen, did not have a controlling power as if they had a king over them. The Roman government, amen, had spread throughout the world and become a utopia within itself. And therefore, even the Israelite children were up under their ostracy, their governing power. And so, so Israel was living in hope because it had been passed down through the psalmist, passed down through the patriots and the prophet that a Messiah was coming. All right, all right, yes, all right. yes, yes. Moses said, and the Lord will raise up a prophet like unto myself. Isaiah said a child would be born a son would be given. And so the prophets began to talk about this individual that would come. But who would be able to recognize him? Because all Israel, as the children were being born, amen, began to look into the face of their child and wonder, is this the one? 
Is this the one? And so, 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 at this setting, John is in the river, or by the river Jordan. He is calling and he is preaching such a dynamic message. One that we need today. Amen. For the message was repent. Repent. It's a word that we don't hear too much no, today. All right. Amen. It means to turn around. It means right. godly sorrow. It means surrendering to God. Amen. But now, but now, but now, I would like to give you the text. I want to talk about the witness. How important is the witness? Because, beloved of God, we need to hear the witness. All right, all right, all right. Have you ever been to a courtroom? If you haven't, let me put you in one this morning. Because within the courtroom, there are some major individuals there. Number one, there is a judge. Because you can't have a courtroom without a judge. The other, there is a prosecutor. Yeah. And the other, there is a defense lawyer. But there are some other people there. And they're called the jurors. That is the setting. But then there is a very important individual. And he is the accuser. He's there because he's on trial. And he's there as far as the prosecutor is concerned. He's going to convict him. You ever seen a prosecutor? Let me explain something to you. If he gets hold to you, he's like a bulldog that will not let you go. He will nip and pick at every cranny of circumstances against you in order to convict you. Well, beloved, here is the scene. John now is on trial. There are those the Jews at Jerusalem that says, I want you to go down and get some evidence concerning this man. So they sent the Pharisee, they sent him down there to ask John, who are you? John stood there and he looked at him and they said, tell us, are you Elijah? He said, no, I'm not Elijah. All right. For the scripture said before the day of deliverance come that the spirit of that Elijah would come. That's why they asked that question. You know, and I know Elijah had gone on to glory, but nevertheless, the scripture says that Elijah would come. Jesus clarified concerning John being a type of Elijah later on in the book. But for now, they want to know who he is. They said, well, are you one of the prophets? That they told us that would come because Moses did say, as I told you before, that the Lord would raise up a prophet. And so they were looking for one prophet. Amen. He said, no, no. They went on to ask John, well, tell us because we need to go back to Jerusalem and tell them what evidence we have found. All right. John says, I am mm -hmm. a voice mm -hmm. crying in the wilderness. Oh, but I come to witness to an individual who is before my time. Mm -hmm. 
He is among you today. Yes, Lord. He said, John said, but I come to bear witness. All right, all right. I come to tell Israel to prepare the way for the Messiah. Yes, Lord. I come to give witness that he is the Son of God because prior to my coming to the river Jordan, God dealt with me. All right, all right, all right. And God told me how to witness him. He said, when he comes, you will see the Spirit of God descending us down upon him and remaining. And when you see this, this will make you to know that he is the Son of God. Now, you got to remember that the book of John here, the writer is John, the son of Zebedee. But he is writing about John the Baptist. All right. All right. It is now time for the witness to declare who he is. And John says, I'm just a voice crying in the wilderness. Right. Oh, yeah. Now you know and I know that in any court setting, mm -hmm. if the prosecutor is going to convict an individual they must get all of the evidence that the police force and the detectives have given them yes, sir. Yes, sir. and even though a lot of time it is incorrect it is incomplete but I said when the prosecutor get hold to you he's like a bulldog he don't want to lose his case. So he would do anything to win the case. And so, so, so these men come down because they want to find out, is this the Messiah? You got to realize the importance of a witness. There are those that have took the stand to witness and they have stood and said, well, I'm a witness. But when the prosecutor began to ask them questions and began to really thoroughly get at them, then they confessed, well, I'm only repeating what he said, she said. All right. And you know, that kind of witness can't hold water. Nah, nah, nah. You got to let him go. Because he's not a eyewitness. And so, so, but John says, I am an eyewitness. And what makes John an eyewitness, if you bear with me this morning, is that God knew, hallelujah, that if John was going to be an effective witness of the things of God, he had to have something of God. Did you hear what I said? So John was baptized when he was a baby. In the womb of Elizabeth, right. he received the Holy Spirit. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. You see, beloved of God, because it took the Spirit to witness of the Spirit. So John had to have the Spirit of God in him in order to witness to the Spirit in Christ. Oh, you get this. It is so important because we had to rely on someone who had witnessed God in the flesh. Help me, Holy Ghost. You want to pray with me? You got your Bibles? Let's turn to the book of Acts. And the first chapter of the book of Acts 
we shall begin reading in the book of Acts and the fourth verse. And being assembled together with him, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, Ye have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put in his own power. Amen. Bear with me now. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Listen to these words. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. Let me go back here because I want you to get this. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now notice after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, then he says ye shall be witnesses. All right, all right. You get this? John couldn't be a witness if he didn't have the Holy Ghost. You, 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 you with me? You with me? Stay with me. And, 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 and because why? Because you and I of this day, the 20th century, we have many men today that have gone forth into all the world who proclaim they know God. Come on, right. Talk about it. They have been called of God. Mm -hmm. and, and, and yet, they don't have the witness. Mm -hmm. Only the witness can declare him. Mm -hmm. Only the witness knows him. The witness took 12 men and said, I want to fill you with the Holy Ghost. I want to make you become preachers to proclaim in, in Jerusalem, in Samaria, and in all parts of the earth. Get this now. Because men and women will have to believe what you say because you are my witness. Amen. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you got some today. Mm -hmm. Yes, proclaim they are witness, but the fact of the matter is, listen to me closely. We have come up with names such as the Roman Catholic Church. I hope you get it. Because if you don't, you're going to miss it. Who says it's all right if we baptize baby? It's all right if we create our own Bible. Mm. Do you know how many people are following them? Well, let me put it a little plain. At the witnesses of God says at Calvary when Jesus Christ, the Son of God, gave up the ghost and he said on Calvary, it is finished. He spoke to the, the, the law of the ceremonial laws. In other words, he said there will be no more goats. No more blood from the animals. He said, my blood is the last one. Do you get it? And, and, and there will be no more priesthood. Did you get it? And yet we have a pope. Did you hear what I said to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we have succumbed to accept man-made rules and regulations, but we need to listen to the witness. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. 
Men that bow down and kiss his ring, kiss his finger, amen, and then and, and, and look at him as the being the intercessor between God and man. That's over. Jesus Christ, who is our great high priest, who sits at the right hand of the throne of God, he is our intercessor. Yes. Book of Hebrews says, for we have an high priest that can be tapped with the feelings of our infirmities, which is Jesus the Christ. You got to stay with the witness. The witness was the apostles. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? When you pick up this Bible, you're not reading, you're not reading any set denominations. Amen. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you pick up this Bible, you are reading the witness. They're the one that wrote the epistle. Paul says, I am a witness because I, I met him on the road to Damascus. He stopped me in my folly. He corrected me in my error. He picked me up out of my stupidity. He gave me a clean heart and a right spirit. Hallelujah. And then God anointed him and took him into the Arabian desert, set him down and said, Pa, I want you to know that the Old Testament was a type and a shadow of things yet to come. That the circumcision of the foreskin of a male was a type of the circumcision of a man's heart. I want you to understand, hey amen, what I've done so that you can relate it to the church as a whole. Tell them that what I've done, I've broken down the middle wall of petition between Jew and Gentile. Tell them what I've done. I didn't come to save just the Jews only. I came to save mankind. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. He used the word world. In the world, he's not talking about the cosmo in the sense of the atmosphere. He's talking about humanity. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And there's none that do it good. You got to listen to the witness. Witness are these who took time to write the epistles to correct the church in their era. The witness are these who rebuked those who tried to come in and bring, amen, the law back in, called the word called Galizium, meaning mixing law and grace together. Paul said, not so. Not so. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Got to stay with the witness. Hallelujah. Because God empowered the witness so that when they wrote, they could witness the truth. So when they take the stand, amen, and they can take the stand and say, he sent me. He called me. And the evidence of my calling is that I'm a witness because I've been baptized in his Holy Spirit. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. Y'all with me? Stay with me now because we got somewhere to go. Because God knew if there were going to be those who represent him to sow the seeds into the hearts and minds of the children, it had to be a witness of him. Hallelujah. It had to be somebody who had been born again. Or oh, you didn't hear that, did you? There are those that are going to the theologian seminaries. They're going to the schools to try to get the revelation. But you can go there and you may get an understanding, but you won't get the revelation. Hallelujah. The Bible said these things are hid from the wise and prudent and reveal unto babes. Meaning, amen, when you come to God, you got to start as a babe. Yeah, you can't amen. bring all your yeah. intellectual ability yeah, in all what you got. Oh, and say, Lord, I got enough. Just give me a little bit more. Yeah. Paul said, no, no. When I came to God, I had to forsake everything. Yeah. And he said, forgetting those things which are behind yeah. me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. God can't put nothing in. Until he empty everything out. Yeah. Someone said I came to Jesus. Just as I was. We right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. You can't teach people a new way unless you got a new way. Hallelujah. You got to be able to tell when they're wrong or when they're right because he that is right is on the inside. Oh, praise the Lord. John said, I come to bear witness. Pharisees and Sadducees wanted to know who he was because they wanted to be able to plot against him. By and by they said this man is a witness to God but listen we cannot allow him to continue lest he will destroy us. John said wait a minute it is not right for the king to have his brother's wife. John was like a blazing fire against sin. So two young ladies got together, Selene and me, and they got together and they devised a plan to get rid of John. Yes, sir. Amen. Enticed the king that the king said, I'll give you half of my throne. Gave it. They danced and brought his sexual mind to a peak that he wanted this young lady more than anything else when he found the price that he had to pay was to get John paid hallelujah so they went and arrest John and amen and while they held him in prison John called his disciples and says, listen, mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. I witness mm -hmm. concerning the Messiah. I know I told them that he was the one, but I want you to do me a favor. Come on, I want you to go back and ask him, is he the one or do we look for another? Yeah. Because John thought if the Messiah came, he was going to set up his kingdom oh, in his day and in his time. And here was John about ready to be headed. He said, I need to know. Because if he's the one and I'm waiting for the chopping block, please go check it out. Jesus was working. Can I use the word work? Yes, he was preaching. He was healing. And he was delivering. All right. When he got the message, amen, from the brethren, John sent us, we, he wants to know, are you the one or should we look for another? Jesus kept on working. Mm -hmm. Healing the blind. Healing the lepers. Mm -hmm. Blessing men and women and seeing them, their lives change. And then Jesus stopped. He said, go back. Mm -hmm. Tell John what you saw. They went back to the prison. They said, John, this Messiah, this one that you talked about, he's healing people with lepers. Yeah. Uh, he's opening eyes that have been blind. Yeah. Uh, he's raising people from the dead. John said, it's well with me now. Because I know that if not on this side, there will be another side. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise because when you witness this thing, yeah. good God from Zion. When you know that you know that you know that you know. Yes, hallelujah. Yes. Who you say. Paul yes. said, I am yes. persuaded Ooh. that he's able. Yes. Good yes. God from Zion. When you walk the walk uh -huh. and you shed the tears oh, yeah. and had somebody in the midnight hour yes. come by and tell you. Don't give up. Don't throw up the coin. Don't give up. When somebody tells you in the midst of your sorrow, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up ye everlasting door. When somebody tells you that the joy of the Lord is your strength. When somebody come by and pick you up, hallelujah, when you feel like, what the use? But somewhere in the midnight hour, an option come that you rise up and say, I feel like running through truth and leaping over.
never walk when you witness the power of God in the midst of your dilemma then you know who he is hallelujah then you can tell somebody come see a man can I preach in here can I preach in here when you witness who he is and then you can come and say come see a man this man I don't know about It feel like you didn't have a friend in the world. Have you ever gone through the valley and you didn't hear nobody singing the songs of Zion? Have you ever felt like you was in the fiery furnace? Hallelujah. Not knowing how you was going to come out. Have you ever met a Goliath in your life? Hallelujah. Knowing that you he had the odds against you. Have you ever felt like you didn't have a friend in the world? Woo! Ah, glory. And in the midst of it, the song came up in your soul. He walks with me. He talks with me. And he tells me, I am. When he tells you, I'll never forsake you. I'll never leave you. Good God from Zion. He'll able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all. You can ask for faith. You got to listen to the witness. Hallelujah. Because there are those they may have come in on the scene that never knew the Lord. There are those that think they know him. But when you've gone through with it, I hear them, brother preacher. I hear them say, He that coming after me, let him pick up his cross and follow me daily. Jesus said, Take me, I yoke upon you, and learn, and learn. That's witnessing. As you learn, you become a witness. You become a witness. Hallelujah to God. Amen. You can't help that drunker unless you've been out there and know that you was a drunker. And hallelujah, you can say to the drunker, I was there. Done that. That prostitute that been on the street, you can't talk conviction into her unless you know what it's all about. To be without food. To be without a roof over your head. To be out in the cold. You got to know what it's all about. To be a witness. Hallelujah. And once you become a witness, God says I can use you. Hallelujah. He said to the apostle, he said go away until you're being down with power from on high. Hallelujah. He says, after that, I want you to be a witness unto me. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because there's some places. Did you hear me, Brother Deacon? Hallelujah. There's some places. If God, amen, if God had shown me before I went there, All right. All right. I might have told the Lord, All right. All right. <laughs> Lord, not today. Right. So glad he didn't show me. Right. Hallelujah. But I got yoked up with it. Right. I got yoked. And when he yoked you, right. hallelujah, the songwriter said, the footprints right. of Jesus, they lead it the way. And he began to take you. And sometimes, though you don't want to go down in the valley, you find yourself going down there. Hallelujah. Right. Where it seemed like there's no one there yeah. to give you an encouraging oh, word. Yeah. No one there to tell you, hold on. When you get there, uh -huh. seem like you're all alone. Yeah. But then, but then, did you hear what I said to you? But then, the book of Hebrew comes in in the 11th chapter. Says faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Then he tells the witness to talk to you. Abraham says, he called me out of the country of you. And I didn't know where he was taking me, but I believed God. 
Abraham said he gave me a promise that I would receive a child and I was 90 years old. And it came to pass. Hallelujah. Some of the other patriarchs come on the scene. A woman, amen, who was the lowest thing in the eyes of man that you could find named Rahab. Yeah. Said, but to the spies, he said, but we heard. We heard about you. We heard you was in bondage in Egypt. We heard that you came out and nobody drew a sword. We heard that you didn't have no, amen, horses or chariots. But we heard that the Red Sea opened up for you. Since we heard it, I believe it. So I'm going to let you down. But would you do me a favor? When you get the victory, would you remember me? Would you remember me and my family? Would you come back by? Would you spare? He said, put a scarlet ribbon in the window. Hallelujah. You got to listen to the witnesses. Before you, amen, give up. Before you throw in the towel. Listen to, listen to the true witnesses. Not those that come along and said, you know, if you serve God, he'll give you wealth and riches. Amen. And the silver and the gold. But the witnesses. The witnesses. First. Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And these things will act. The witness said, What if a man gained the whole world? Huh? That's the witness. You, you got to listen to the witness and lose his soul. See what I'm saying? But if you listen to the witness, you will get your priorities right. God first. You see, John says, I'm a voice. I'm a witness. The apostles come along and they said, Peter said, we handled the word of God. We touched him. We ate with him. That's a witness. Hallelujah. Paul said, I met him on the road to Damascus. And I never looked back. That's a witness. Hallelujah. When you listen to the witness. Hallelujah. You won't get discouraged because the witness won't come with doubts. The witness will say, I can do all things. Through Christ. That strengthens me. God from Zion. The witness will say, when I'm weak, then am I strong. Good God from Zion. Y'all all right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The witness lay down their lives that you and I could read and see the Christ in their lives who proved himself to be ever sufficient to meet the needs of his people to be able to go through the fire and come out without a siege mm -mm. David said I was young, but now I'm old. But I never seen the righteous. You all right, daughter? But I never seen the righteous. <laughs> never seen them forsaken. Hallelujah. I, I, I never seen God run out on them when things got rough. Hallelujah. I, I, I never seen God so far away that he couldn't hear because the writer said his ears are open to the cry of his children. Got to listen to the witness. Amen. Amen. So in the courtroom, the jury sits. Good God from Zion. And they're looking at the prosecutor. And they're looking at the defendant. But they're depending on the witness. Because they know that the prosecutor is one that will use all kind of methods. And there are those who the defender had to defend. 
didn't have the backing. John was not a part of the inner circle. All right. All right. He stayed on the outskirts of the town. Mm -hmm. All right. He ate locusts. Mm -hmm. His clothing was camel hair. Mm -hmm. So he didn't have that kind of camaraderie with people. No. He was a loner. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you, Jesus. But he was the witness. Oh. And guess who sits in the jury stand? Oh, yes. Can I can I show you the jury? Amen. Yes. Huh? Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. <laughs> can I show you the jury? Yes. Can I show you the jury? Yes. Now who are you gonna believe? Because you got to watch and listen. Oh, yes. You got to see. Yes. The witness. Amen. The prosecutor oh, yes. is the doubter. Oh, yes. The prosecutor yes. is the individual who is lifted in pride. Mm -hmm. The prosecutor is for himself. Mm -hmm. But you're the jury. Oh, yes. All right. You're the one that has to pass the verdict. Mm -hmm. You got to accept the proof and accept the witness. You got to know who is speaking all right, all right, the truth. All right, all right. Yes. All right, Bill. Yes. Got me? Yes. All right. Paul says in the third chapter of the book of Romans, mm -hmm. he says, what advantage had the Jew? Mm -hmm. And he says, much in every way. For they had the oracles of God. But here's what he says. Let every man be a liar. And let God's word be true. That's the witness. That's the witness. You got to believe the witness. Why? Because you're the jury. Shall we stand? Shall we stand? He came to set you free. He did what Abraham couldn't do. He did what Moses couldn't do. He did what none of the prophets could do. But he was the lamb without spot. A record. We didn't have one in the human family. But Jesus said in the book of Hebrews, sacrifices and offerings thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared for me. Lo, I come in the volume of the book, for it is written of me to do thy will, O God. Jesus. Born by immaculate conception. Came into the world without a spot or wrinkle. Yes, yes. The Bible says he had no guile in his mouth. Oh, yes. And he was oh, yes. our sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Presented himself on the behalf of humanity. And was accepted by God because God gave the exception. Before Jesus went to Calvary. God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Amen. Amen. Jesus gave up the ghost. Shed his blood. Law stood by at Calvary and witnessed and gave grace and ovation to come in. And grace stepped in. And grace says, whosoever will, let him come. Are you here this morning? Have you asked yourself, where shall I spend eternity? You're in the jury box. And it's left up to you to give your verdict. He paid the price. He has made a way for you 
to escape. For the writer said, come and buy without price. Meaning you don't need no money. Because you can't purchase this salvation with silver or gold. All you have to do is come and say, I believe that God sent his son. Who gave his life. Who shed his blood and rose from the dead on the third day. And I accept Jesus Christ into my life. Because I want to live for God. Because I want to worship and serve him. And I want to have fellowship with my fellow man. Are you here today? What about you? Have you made that commitment? Have you come to him with a repentant heart? Have you said yes Lord? I receive the witness and I'm willing to surrender to the witness. Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? There's room at the cross for you. There's room at the cross for you. Though millions have come, there's still room for one. There is room at the cross for you. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you.